In Queensland, seafood by the water in summer is a quintessential experience. And oysters are no exception. Look at that. Beautiful. Food of the gods. That, that's what you want. Look at that. Oh, wow. They just naturally grow a beautiful shape and they're sweet. They're just sweet to eat. They're beautiful. I think it's the warm weather and it's Queensland. Can't beat it. <laughs> We're not going to tune you now, you've got it. <laughs> In the warm waters of Bowen, a coastal town in Queensland's Whit Sundays, oyster farming is a relatively new industry with a lot of potential. This is due to the recent introduction of the black lip oyster. Farmers John and Annette Collison moved to Bowen just over 10 years ago after farming oysters in New South Wales for more than 20 years. Their intention was to retire and be closer to one of their sons and grandchildren. But once an oyster farmer, always an oyster farmer. After seeing oysters growing on the rocks, John couldn't help himself. And he has found a great appreciation for the black lips. We found out over the years that they are hardy, they are just tough. They don't die. We've had Debbie the Cyclone with pure fresh water, no salt at all, zero. And they're still fine. For the past five years, John and Annette have been supplying fresh black lips to fishmonger Terry Must shop at the Bowen Marina. It's great, you know, the feedback is good. People come in and they expect to get the local oysters and that's what we can deliver for probably eight months of the year. This is the first commercial harvest of oysters in North Queensland at this time. Did you not sell oysters here before this? We did. If we get oysters, they're gonna come from either New Zealand, South Australia or Tasmania. So if you think about the food miles the oyster does, it's 3,000 k's to Auckland or 3,000 k's to Cotton Bay or Tasmania. No, are they frozen? They're fresh out of uh, South Australia. Oh. Yeah. Well, we've got something here that's fresh today and live today. So that's the beauty about these oysters. If these oysters are so wonderful, why has it taken so long for them to become part of Queensland's seafood industry? Grab a handful of these. Max Wingfield, senior research scientist in aquaculture for the Queensland Department of Primary Industries, has the answers. He's been working with the black lip oysters over the past three years. There are fantastic results coming from the pioneering work of the Collisons up in Bowen and very promising results with black lip oysters also coming from Northern Territory research. So the Queensland government decided to invest in late 2021 in oyster farming where the intention was to conduct research to support the industry and particularly to close the life cycle and be able to produce the oyster efficiently in the hatchery. The breakthrough came when Max and his team started using plastic sheeting that they have called bats. So the bats are simply a 30 centimetre square of black plastic, uh, just concertinaed and with a cable tie holding it in the middle. And so when they're covered with newly settled spat, sort of about five, five to seven days after settlement, instead of being concentrated and not getting much flow of water and therefore much of the microalgae they need to feed off, we can just remove the cable tie with minimal handling that, and then it spreads out the bat so we get better water flow. These innovative bats have helped create a world first breeding program, increasing potential production of black lips. Not one for hyperbole, but this could potentially save an oyster industry threatened by warming waters and disease. So the black lip oyster is of great importance to the industry because it is a true tropical oyster. It's suitable for farming right through the northern part of the state, central Queensland, north Queensland, the Gulf of Carpentaria, as well as Northern Territory and north of West Australia. It's also a large, hardy, fast-growing, attractive oyster, and it's great to eat. John Collison is predicting big things for Queensland's oyster industry. I can see it in the future, just because I know what I know about black lips. It's gonna be bigger than the Sydney rock industry in New South Wales, at least. Once guys get the idea of what they can do, and Max is proving that now scientifically,
Successfully breeding blacklip oysters is not the only world first in this story. Griffith University scientists Marina Richardson and Nicolina Nananich are part of a team who have discovered a new oyster species in Queensland's Moreton Bay Marine Park. That looks like actually a different species. Yeah. But then again, that might who be... knows? <laughs> <laughs> I know. We'll cover this during that study now. The problem with oysters, which this all sort of like came about a few years ago with our supervisor, she did this really big study where she looked at oyster diversity um, in the intertidal zone across all of Queensland and found that we actually have this really, really high diversity. The supervisor, Dr Carmel McDougall, realised visual identification of oysters was unreliable because different species of oysters in the region could look similar, while oysters within the same species can look totally different. By using molecular tools, they discovered the range of oysters was way beyond what they thought. As a result, we don't actually have a great understanding of species diversity in areas even like Moreton Bay. So it was previously assumed that we had the one species, Sydney rock oysters, but we now actually know that we have multiple species. At the Bribey Island facility, Max and his team have been looking at the different species to learn how they react to different environments, including the newly identified Queensland sunshine oyster, which is visually hard to distinguish from a Sydney rock oyster. These are the new, new tropical rock oyster that we're working with, the sunshine, Queensland sunshine rock oyster. So these have done much better, they've grown uh, more than twice as large in terms of weight as the Sydney rock oysters. And as you can see, survival is much better. Survival across all the replicates was 72%. Part of the trial includes introducing the oysters to QX disease. QX stands for Queensland Unknown. It emerged in the 1970s and is devastating the traditional Sydney rock oyster industry. It takes three years to grow an oyster to full size. QX can wipe them out in moments. There's quite a few of them all great ones. So there's a focus on the potential resilience of the new Queensland sunshine oyster, which looks a lot like a Sydney rock and is found naturally in the Moreton Bay Marine Park. So then if Sydney rock oysters are affected so drastically by QX disease, is this lineage G, Queensland sunshine oyster, also affected by it. So I think that's where the interest really rose. And because it was occurring in areas where you've got oyster farmers farming, obviously, Sydney rock oysters, it kind of posed as the perfect species to trial out a run to see whether or not it'll grow well and whether or not it actually um, gets infected by disease. Ben Window has been farming Sydney rock oysters in Moreton Bay for seven years. He has 15,000 dozen on his leases. Ben sees the potential in a disease-resistant oyster and is working with Max on breeding up the spat of the Queensland sunshines. Hey, Max. How hey, you going? Yeah, good. Good, good, good to see you. Out. Yeah, you too. Yeah. Nice to meet out here. Got these uh, sunshine oyster spat for you, like we said. Excellent. So these ones are a little bit bigger than the last batch you got. 50,000 of them, 10,000 to a bag. Wow. They are much bigger than the last batch, aren't they? Yep. And they're a beautiful looking little thing. Ben believes oyster farming is the most environmental type of farming as oysters improve water health. More oysters, healthier waterways. He's excited about the possibility of Queensland sunshine oysters becoming commercially viable. Well, I'd be hoping they grow to a good marketable size, even at the same rate as the wild caught stuff will be fine, you know, in that two to three year period, but that they survive in the heat wave kind of conditions that we get. And so I think, again, compared to southern farmers, Queensland's waters have been warmer. You know, we might get 30 degree water out in the bay here. I kept a lot of stock in the water here last year just to test it out, and we lost 95% of it, maybe 100 baskets of oysters, so wipes them all That's out. That's one of so. the great things we know about the first trial, the first batch of the, the sunshine oysters, that all the, all the little Sydney rock oysters that were stocked alongside them died, whereas the sunshine rock oysters and the black lips, uh, the vast majority of them survived.
Due to the bay's marine park status, only oysters endemic to the area can be farmed there. Black lips aren't currently found naturally in Moreton Bay, but Queensland Sunshine are. While you can't farm black lip oysters in the bay, Max has been granted special permission to do trials of them. He's enlisted farmer Colin Wren to help with trials for both species. And as you can imagine, Colin's happy to do so. Colin, I know that these aren't commercial for you, but when you look at these black lips compared to the commercial ones that you are yep. rowing, what's the comparison? These ones are a little bit behind through to the rest of the year. We hopefully we start to see some good growth. Having another species would be great for southeast Queensland. So these are the black lips. Have you got the Queensland sunshine in here too as a comparison? Colin's got two generations of Queensland sunshine. He's got some of the older ones, which are now 15 months old from our very first spawning. Can we have a look at them? Sure, that'd be yeah. great. I want to see how they're going. <laughs> so these are the, the first cohort, the older sunshine yeah. oysters. So they're about 15 months old, and I think you've got them in about November. Yep. A little bit dirty, but gee, I'm impressed with those. That's excellent size and growth for a 15-month-old oyster. The other thing is that the Sydney Rock oysters that went out and were exposed over the summer, the Sydney Rock oysters all died. So these ones are very encouraging. This is the first time the Sunshine oyster has been grown to already a cocktail size, a marketable size in, in an aquaculture situation. And well, I think they look beautiful. What do you think, Colin? Yeah, I'm definitely happy with the um, shape of them and the depth of them. Yeah, it's definitely, as a farmer, this is what we want to achieve, yeah. I hope it's really easy. So this is dead set history in the making? We hope so, yeah. Are you going to eat it, Max? Yeah, I will. So this will be uh, the, the, the first time a Queensland Sunshine Oyster knowingly has been eaten. Here goes. That, that's beautiful. Do you have to say we, that though, right? I do have to say that. <laughs> and we will have to do some uh, consumer evaluation trials, but it certainly passes my test. That's a fantastic oyster. I'm very pleased. Mm.